What is going on guys, it's Pangino here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the updated Ultimate FPS Increase Guide for League of Legends. This guide is going to go into further detail on how to optimize the latest updates of League of Legends from Season 8 and onwards, building upon and improving the techniques from my previous video, giving you guys the best experience possible with the latest updates of League. The main purpose of this video is to ensure that everyone is getting the best experience possible with inside of League of Legends in terms of frame rate, visual quality, and overall performance, so you can focus more on playing the game and enjoying the game to the best of your ability and not having your system slowing you down. There'll be configs inside of this video for everyone regardless of what sort of system you're running on, whether that be a low-end system, medium-end system, or a brand new super high-end system. Regardless of what sort of system you're running on, it's always best to get the best performance possible out of your game, as there is always some room for improvement. So if you guys do find this video helpful, please do share it around with any friends, family, teammates, or anyone you find can benefit from the optimizations in this video. And if you can also leave a like on the video if you are happy with the results and do appreciate this kind of content, as it helps me out tremendously. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel and press that bell notification to be notified whenever I do upload brand new videos, whether that's for overall PC maintenance videos or game specific guides. And if you guys can leave your results, questions, queries or suggestions for more content in that comment section down below, it's always fantastic to hear from you guys and that will be deeply appreciated as well. With all that said and done, let's get straight into the video to keep this as fast and as simple as possible. Right, so starting off with the guide, what you guys need to go ahead and do is navigate into the description down below and you'll find a link for an FPS pack in which I've compiled. You can click on either of the download links. If the first one doesn't work and you can't open it or you can't download it, simply use the second download link and you should be good to go. Once you've downloaded the file, put it onto your desktop and you'll be given a RAR or a ZIP folder, just like so. It should be called League of Legends FPS by Panj V2. Now you guys are going to need a program called 7-Zip or WinRAR to open this program up. Most people already have one of these installed, but if you don't, take yourself over to Google, Google either 7-Zip or WinRAR, install one to your machine and come back to this video. The reason you'll need one of those programs is this is a folder which has been compiled to a file so you can download it easily, and we can just simply go ahead and unpack the folder. It's just to keep this video convenient and simple for you guys to follow along with, and everything can be found in one place. So once you've got the file and one of those programs installed, right click on the file and hit extract here. Once it's then completed, you will then find a folder on your desktop with an identical name. Go inside of the folder and you should be finding a config folder, optimizations folder and a credits.txt. Now we're going to be coming back to this folder in a few steps time and we're going to be starting off by optimizing the game application files themselves to ensure that we're getting the best performance possible. Starting off with this, what we're going to be doing is actually going over to where we boot into League of Legends. Most people will have a shortcut or an icon on the desktop to boot into League of Legends like I do. The logo for League of Legends for me on my desktop isn't actually there right now because it's just slightly bugged but you guys are more than likely to see the logo just look for the league of legends shortcut if you don't have that you can simply go into the bottom left hand side and also search league of legends just like so now what we're going to be doing is actually right clicking on the actual icon going to properties going over to the shortcut tab and clicking on open file location once you guys are inside of this folder, you should be seeing all of these folders and files. And that means that you're actually in the directory of where the game is installed to. What we're going to be doing now is navigating into the top right hand side to search League of Legends. And we're going to be typing in .exe, just like so. And once you guys have typed that in, you should be seeing a bunch of League of Legends application files with different logos start to appear. Now what we're going to be doing, starting all the way from the top to the bottom, is we're actually going to be right clicking on the first application here at the top. Some of them might have similar names, so don't panic. Right clicking, going down to properties. Inside of here, we're then going to go over to the compatibility tab. We're then going to select the option for disable full screen optimizations. Then going into change high DPI settings and also going over to the option for override high DPI scaling behavior, ensuring that's also checked. Pressing OK, go ahead and press apply and go ahead and press OK. Now what we're actually going to be doing is repeating all of the steps for all of the applications which start with League of Legends. Typically all of the ones with the old League of Legends logo like this one and the new League of Legends logo. We don't need to apply this to the J patch or the bug splat report system. We're only gonna be applying it to the League of Legends applications. So we're gonna be repeating this step for all of the League of Legends applications with inside of here. This should only take a minute or so, so just go ahead and repeat the step just like I do. Make sure that you do scroll down in this folder in case there are any more applications further down in which you might have missed. Then once you are done applying those optimizations to the game EXE files, we can then simply go ahead and exit out of our game files as that step of the video is now completed. What we can now go ahead and do is actually install our custom optimized config file for League. So what we're going to be doing is opening up our game folder again by following the previous steps. So what we're going to be doing is going over to the League of Legends application on our desktop or shortcut, right clicking on it, going to properties, going to the shortcut tab and finding open file location and selecting that. Once you guys are inside of the game folder, what we're going to be doing this time is scrolling all the way to the top and we should find the config folder. Go inside of config and you should be seeing a bunch of different config files. But the one we're interested in is game.cfg. Now, if you guys wish to back up your already existing game config file in case you want to reinstall this afterwards, if you're not happy with these optimizations, you can go ahead and simply drag this onto your desktop or put it into a folder or copy it somewhere else. 
Now to install our custom optimized game config file, what we're going to be doing is just simply moving this folder over to the side, then opening up the FPS pack provided, going into the configs folder, and with inside of here you'll see a bunch of different folders containing optimized configs. With inside of here you want to be realistic with yourself and you want to click on the folder which matches your system specs. So summarize your system on how you'd seem fit. So for me right now I'm recording this video on my high end gaming machine, but just to my left I actually have a low end gaming machine which has the medium to low config in. So simply click on the folder containing the config you wish to go with, so I'm going to be going with the high end config, and you'll find a game CFG in there. Now to install this optimized game config file, all you need to do is simply go ahead and actually drag the file over into your game folder, drag it into there and replace the file in this destination. Once that's then completed, your brand new optimized game config file has now been installed to your game. Following on from there, what we're now going to be doing is applying optimizations to the League of Legends client. So what we're going to be doing is actually booting into League of Legends and booting into the client. Starting off in the logon screen, we're going to be going down to the bottom left hand side and checking both the options to disable the login animations and disabling the login music. Once those have been changed, simply go ahead and sign into your account. Once you guys have signed into your account, we can actually go ahead to the top right hand side of the screen and click on the settings cog found here. Once the settings cog has now opened, we're going to be going over to the general tab. We're going to be enabling low spec mode. We're also going to be enabling the option to close the client during the game. We're then going to go over to the window size and we're going to be switching this to the lowest possible, which is 1024 by 576. Once you guys have done that, we can then navigate down to the notifications tab and disable the esports notifications. Following on from there, we can then skip all the way down to the interface tab. With inside of the interface tab, we're then going to be navigating over to the enable HUD animations option and deselecting that. Once it's then been deselected, we can then go ahead and press done and the client optimizations are now complete. We can now go ahead and actually customize and further optimize the in-game settings to match our configs and to match our system specs. So doing this, I like to actually go ahead and hit the play option and boot into a complete bot match. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and actually hit the play option, go to create custom, set any password, allow spectators set to none and hit confirm. Inside of here, just simply go ahead and add bots to every single team to make sure the lobby is completely filled to simulate a real match. Once that's then done, simply go ahead and hit start game. All right, so now once we've booted into the game, what we can actually simply go ahead and do is go ahead and press escape and go over to our video options. All right, so now that we're inside of the video tab, what we're going to be doing is actually heading over to our windowed mode. Now, most people running on newer systems, you should find the best results going with borderless mode. For any of you guys on lower end systems, you can also try out full screen. I recommend most people try out different options and see which works best for their FPS. For me, I personally play on borderless. We're then going to go over to the option which is hide eye candy and making sure that is then disabled. The graphics side, we're going to be setting all the way down to very low. Character quality, I like to set to very low for everyone. Effects quality, set to very low for everyone. Shadows can be turned to either off or low, depending on what your personal preference is. But if you want the best performance possible, I would recommend turning shadows off. Environment quality is going to be one of the number one options which is going to change the visual fidelity of the game. This will change the overall look of the map around you, such as trees, grass, the overall map, towers, and other monuments. So what I recommend everyone watching this video does is setting this to very low at the start. Now, if you don't like the way the game looks and you wish to slightly bump the visual fidelity, start by going up a step at a time until you find a level in which you're comfortable with. For me, I'm personally happy with very lows. I find it a lot easier to see the minions and see the champions off of that as the ground around them is slightly less detailed so I can focus more on the important stuff. Tinker around with this option and find a balance in which better suits you. Character inking we're also going to be turning off for the best performance possible. Going down to frame rate cap. Now I recommend everyone sets this to uncapped. Once that's then been done, turn anti-aliasing to the off position and also wait for vertical sync. Make sure that it's turned off as well as this will introduce unnecessary input lag and make your game feel sluggish. Once you're then done inside of there, we can then go ahead and hit OK. Once you're then done setting your in-game options, don't pay too much attention to the FPS counter at the moment as we've still got more FPS improvements to continue on with with the rest of this guide. But now that we're done with inside of here and actually setting up our in-game options depending on what we like, we can now go ahead and actually exit the game. Now that we're actually done setting up our game and installing our custom in-game config files, we can actually go ahead and further optimize our operating system to be tailored towards better performance, not just with inside of League, but practically every game you play. You should be seeing some fantastic FPS benefits with inside of League and overall boost the performance in everything you do on your PC. So to start off, what we're going to be doing is actually navigating to the bottom left hand side and typing in power. Once you guys have done that, simply go ahead and click on any of the battery icons with the cord going around it. Doesn't matter what the option says, just click on one of them with this logo. Once you're then inside of this option, we're going to be going over to where it says power options in the directory at the top. Click on power options and you brought to this screen here. Then go ahead and simply select the option for show additional plans. 
Then with inside of here, you should be seeing balanced, high performance, and power saver. For some of you guys, you might be seeing a few more, but don't worry about those ones. And for the majority of you guys watching this video, you should not be seeing the ultimate performance power plan. This is actually a secret ultimate performance power plan in which can be unlocked with inside of Windows 10. And if you guys wish to see how to do that, I'm going to link a video in the top right hand side now, and you can click on that card to be brought to that video, which will show you very quickly how to install the ultimate performance power plan. I recommend if you've got a little bit of extra time to go ahead and actually follow that video, come back to this one, as you should be seeing better results. For any of you guys who don't wish to follow that and you just wish to follow this video, you can go ahead and select the high performance power plan as that should suffice. So either select the ultimate performance power plan or high performance. For me, I'm going to be going with ultimate. Once you've then checked your power plan, go over to change plan settings. You can set these two options to anything you wish to do so they will not change the performance of this guide. Go ahead and click on change advanced power settings. With inside of here, go to hard disk, turn off hard disk after, double click on that option, go to the setting, click on the number or the text and set this to zero. Once you've then done that, go ahead and press apply. Then go ahead and scroll all the way down. You should see the option for processor power management. Click on that, then go inside of minimum processor state, maximum processor state, and ensure both settings are set to 100%. Now, if they're not, double click on the number, set it to 100. Once you're then done with both of those, press apply, press OK. You can then go ahead and save changes to the power options. And now we've now optimized our Windows power options for better power performance. This is completely safe to do. It won't make your system unstable. It won't cause any lag. And it also will not increase heat on your system. It's completely fine and safe to follow. Assuming that we've now properly set up our Windows power plan, we can now go ahead into the FPS pack provided, go inside of the optimizations folder, and you'll find they set up for the CPU core parking utility. Double click on it, and you'll also see an explanation in the bottom right hand side of the screen now, which will actually briefly tell you what CPU core parking does and what this will allow you to do. Again, you can follow the link inside of the credits.txt to further read up upon this, but to keep this guide short, you guys can read what it does in the bottom right hand side or follow that link for a further in-depth explanation This is one of the number one things I do to any machine when I get my hands on it And I highly recommend you follow this step once you guys are inside of the setup wizard Simply go ahead and select the option for next accept the terms of the license agreement and press next once again press next and install Once the program has been installed make sure the option to launch it once it's completed and press finish once the program boots up, you might be notified that there is an updated version available. You can update to that if you wish to do so, but for the majority of you, I recommend just hitting close. Now with inside of here, your numbers should look different to mine, but the program should look very similar. Now what we're actually going to be doing is changing four options with inside of here, and it's very simple to do. Starting off, we're going to be going over to our power data found here, selecting the drop down menu, and we're now going to be matching our power plan option with inside of here to the one we previously set inside of Windows. So if you went with high performance, select high performance. If you went with the ultimate power plan, go with ultimate performance. Once you guys have set your power plan and matched it with the one you previously set, we're then going to be going down to core parking index. This is the amount of CPU cores in which we're going to unpark. So what we're going to be doing is dragging this blue slider, wherever it might be, and dragging it all the way up to 100%. We're then going to go over to frequency scaling index, and again, dragging this slider all the way to 100%. As this is the speed of those cores, so when we're under load, we want those cores going at 100% of their speed for the best performance possible and to minimize frame drops. And finally, we're then going to be going down to turbo boost index, which is the maximum turbo speed of those cores, and again, setting this to 100%. With all of those four options set there, when your system is now under 100%, percent load and you would typically get frame drops we can actually now go ahead and further boost that up slightly to minimize the amount of frame drops you're experiencing overall smooth out your frame rate and have a higher frame rate overall once that's then done simply go ahead and press apply it will then notify you that the changes have successfully been applied press ok and we can then go ahead and actually exit out of that program Following on from there, what we can actually go ahead and do is apply a fix to the Windows sound options to ensure that they are running completely natively and no sound conversion has to be done by the CPU. This can sometimes cause micro stuttering with inside of the game, cause longer loading times and also cause some crashes. This isn't just with League of Legends, this happens with practically every game and it's because your Windows audio settings are mismatched from those with the game. So just to eliminate that and just to make sure everything's running smoothly, what we can do is actually navigate to the bottom right hand side, go to our speaker icon and right click. Then go to the sound settings. With the side of here, go to playback. And with the side of here, we're then gonna be scrolling down to our audio output device. It will typically be the output device with the green tick next to it. Once you guys have found what your audio output device is, right click on it, select properties, go to the enhancements tab found here at the top and select the option for disable all sound effects. Once that's then done, simply go ahead and press apply. Once that's applied, go ahead and go to the advanced section at the top, go to default format, then go into the drop down menu, scroll all the way to the top until you find 16 bit, 44,100 Hertz CD quality. Select that, then again, press apply, press okay, 
and OK. Now you should not be noticing any sort of deterioration from your Windows audio. All this has done is ensured that Windows is running at the native audio rate, so your CPU doesn't have to do more work in decoding and encoding audio files or changing the frequencies within inside of them. Another quick optimization in which we can do for everyone watching this video is we can actually declutter our system drastically by clearing out our Windows dump files. So, so to do this, it's very quick and simple. Navigate into the bottom left hand side and type in percent app data percent, just like so. Once you guys have done that, simply go ahead and press enter. Once you guys are inside of here, simply navigate up to the directory at the top and click on app data. Go into local, then proceed to scroll down until you see a folder called temp or temp double click on the folder and within inside of this folder you should be seeing a bunch of windows excess caching files dump files and just other stuff in which your system has dumped over here and isn't even using i think the most i've ever seen someone remove from this folder was actually linked on a previous video of mine someone managed to screenshot it and they removed 90 gigabytes of data from this folder it's absolutely insane and i recommend you actually come in here and clear this out run about once every month to once every three months as this just takes up excess space slows down your machine and it's completely useless so what we're going to be doing to clear this out is going all the way to the top selecting and highlighting everything with inside of here once you've done that right click and hit delete you'll then be prompted that this cannot be done to every folder and file in here just simply hit do this for all current items and hit skip if that pop-up comes up again select the same options and hit skip once you're done inside of there simply exit out and what i like to do at that point is actually go ahead to my recycling bin and hit empty recycling bin then for one of the last steps inside of this video we can actually go ahead and navigate into the bottom left hand side again this time typing in this pc right clicking on this pc and going to the properties tab Inside of here, simply navigate over to the left hand side and select advanced system settings. Inside of here, go to the advanced tab, then go down to performance and hit settings. Inside of here, this will typically be set to let Windows choose for what's best for my computer. We're going to be going down and selecting custom, then proceeding to uncheck everything with inside of here besides a few options. Simply go ahead and click on the tick and make sure it's unchecked. We're then going to be re-enabling smooth edges of screen fonts and show thumbnails instead of icon. Everything else just takes up excess performance with inside of Windows and I almost guarantee you, none of you will even notice the changes from turning these off. You can also turn off smooth edges of screen fonts if you wish to get the rougher looking Windows font like I do. I know some people in the comment section of most of my videos ask me how you do that and that is how you do it. You just have this option here turned off. This is personal preference and you can keep this on if you wish to do so. Once you're then done inside of there, go ahead and press the apply button and this will take a minute or two to kick in. Once you're then done with inside of there, head over to the advanced tab again at the top, go to processor scheduling and select adjust best performance of program. Once you're then done inside of there, simply navigate over to the virtual memory tab and this time click on change. Inside of here, it will typically be set to automatically manage paging file size for all drives. What we're going to be doing is unchecking this option. Then with inside of here, what we're going to be doing is actually optimizing where our page file is. Our page file is basically backup RAM with inside of our system. Once your system RAM runs out, what it does is it actually spills over to your SSD or hard drives to process that data. So starting off with inside of here, what we're going to be doing is deleting any old paging files so we can put the new one in an optimized place. What we're going to be doing is selecting every drive in here, starting off with the first one, going down to no paging file and pressing set. It'll then give you a warning message, just simply go ahead and press yes as we're going to be installing one again in a minute. Go down to the next drive, no paging file, set, no paging file, set, no paging file, set. Once you've then got no paging file installed, what we can now go ahead and do is follow the criteria which is going to come up on the right hand side of the screen now. And we can actually go ahead and set our paging file depending on our system specs. Now, at number one, the best place to put a paging file for the best performance possible is any SSD you can get your hands on. If you have an SSD installed to your machine already, that's fantastic, as that is going to be the best place to put it. Now, second best scenario. If you do not have an SSD installed to your machine, but you have multiple hard drives on your machine, we want to install the paging file to the hard drive which does not have our game installed to it, as that hard drive's performance is already being stressed from the game. So we want to put this on a hard drive which does not have the game installed to it. And third scenario, if you guys only have one hard drive in your machine, don't panic, we can just install our paging file to that. So going off of that criteria, simply go ahead and find the drive you're going to install it to. So I'm going to be selecting C drive. You might be putting it onto a different drive, so select your drive just by clicking on it. Once you've then done that, simply go ahead to the system manage size, select set, once you're then done with that, you should then notice that it says system manage size. Once you're then done inside of there, go ahead and press OK. It will then notify you that you'll have to restart before this can take effect. That's fine, we're going to be restarting later anyway. Press OK, press apply, OK, and OK once again, and hit restart later. Right, so now that we've reached this step in the video, what we can actually go ahead and do now is actually restart our machines to ensure that everything has been applied properly, and we're on a fresh boot of Windows. To do this, simply navigate into the bottom left-hand side, go to the power option, 
right click and hit restart. Come back to the video, ensure that everything is good to go and you're good to continue on. Welcome back to the video guys, you guys should have now restarted your machines, be back on this video and be good to go with the last step. So the last step of this video is to actually go into the FPS pack provided one last time, go into the optimizations folder and get the time resolution application included and drag it onto your desktop. This program is absolutely phenomenal in boosting performance for practically everything, workstation tasks, internet browsing, video editing, Photoshop, games, regardless of what it is, I've installed this program to every single machine I've had my hands on and I've never seen anyone not get good performance gains from this. What this program does is it lowers the amount of input latency between the operating system, hardware you have installed to your machine and the application in which you're running itself, resulting in lower input lag, better frame rates, smoother frame rates, lower frame times, and overall better responsiveness. It's a very easy program to use and I recommend using it all the time. So to use the program, what you do is simply go ahead and boot into the program, select maximum, which sets the lowest amount of input time possible, minimize the program. You can then go ahead and boot into whichever you wanna do, play the game, no matter what it is, once you're then done playing or done doing whatever it is you're doing, go ahead, bring the program back up, select default, and exit out of the program. So now that everything is done, optimized and out of the way, what we can actually go ahead and do now is do boot into time resolution, select maximum, minimize the program, go over to League of Legends, play the game and enjoy a much better experience. And there you guys have it, my updated ultimate FPS increase guide for League of Legends. Again, guys, if you are happy with the results of this video, please do share it around with anyone you might be playing League with or can benefit from the optimizations with inside of this video. If you guys are happy with the results, again, please do leave a like on this video as it helps me out tremendously. Also, feel free to leave any results, questions, queries, and suggestions for other games, content, or anything you wish to see me cover or help further optimize in that comment section down below as it's always fantastic to engage with you guys. And also subscribe to the channel for more content like this on updated League guides or other games, or if you just wish to be notified whenever I do upload, make sure to press that bell notification to be notified instantly. Thank you very much for watching this video guys, I've been Panjano and I'm out.